going to begin this morning with meditation and prayer. And as a reminder for those that have your cell phone, if you'd be so kind to put them in the off position where it would not be a distraction uh, to you. It is worship time. Our minds should be solely focused on the purpose of why we have assembled, and that is on God and God alone. During meditation, let us examine our life by way of 1 John 1 and 9, assuring that you are in fellowship, ready to worship God with a pure heart. In preparation, let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, we come this morning with our heads bowed to thank you for giving us a wonderful opportunity to assemble ourselves in obedience to your word. For you said, forsake not the assembly of yourself. And we have assembled the Heavenly Father to worship you in truth and in obedience to your word. Father God, we ask for your blessing and anointing to be upon our worship service, that it would be holy and acceptable in your eyesight, that this day that you would get all glory. For we ask it in Christ's name, is our prayer, amen. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Word of truth this morning is going to come from a number of passages of scripture. And the subject, and please repeat after me, empty, empty. Repentance. repentance. Amen. Empty repentance. And we're going to come out of the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter. Is everybody open their Bibles? And for those that are following us on YouTube, we pray that you would have your Bibles with you. And uh, make sure that you exercise grace provision of 1 John 1 and 9, assuring that you have named all of your known sins privately to God the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of the Son, Jesus. That way, the Holy Spirit is in control of your thoughts and being able to minister unto you to teach you what he has to say. Amen. So in the book of uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter, are we all there? Amen. We're going to look at verse 12 and 13. Let us all read. But when Jesus read, when Jesus heard that he said to them, they that hold need not a position, but they that are sick, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. God has come here in the form of Jesus Christ. To call the world to change their mind. Now, repent means to turn a uh, 360 degree and go come, uh, follow Christ. The Bible teaches us to say what you mean and mean what you say. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. Now, it's a reason why it keeps you from lying. Amen. See, when you get to trying to explain things on reason why you didn't do it, nothing, or didn't show up or whatever, you start exaggerating and lying. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if you can't make it, just say, look here, I'm not going to be there. That's it. <laughs> Don't worry about trying to think about hurting somebody's feelings. No, uh-uh. Yes, I'm going to be there. See, when you uh, let your yes be yes, then you are trustworthy. 
Amen. You're reliable. But when you get trying to explain uh, your way out of something that you haven't did nothing, look here. Uh, you start lying. Amen. Nine times out of ten. All right, here, uh, Matthew 5. We're still in the book of Matthew. You go to Matthew 5, and we're going to look at verse 37 and see what the Holy Spirit left here for us to, to learn. Are we all there? Uh, let us read. But let your communication read. Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of what that say? See, if you talk more than that, you subject to allow Satan to come in. And that little demon put thoughts in your mind. Amen. If you don't feel like doing something, just say, look, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yes. Are you going to make it? Yes. See, I always know a person be lying. When I invite them to church, they say, well, you know, I'm going to try to make that. Wait a minute. You're going to need to try to stop lying is what you need to do. Because you never try to go to work. You always go to work. Amen. See, you don't ever tell your boss if your boss says, look, you're going to be here on Monday. Well, you know, I'm going to try to make that. <laughs> Amen. No, uh-uh. You never try to go to work. But when it comes to church, you always got to try to come to church. There's something wrong with that. Why do you have to try to come to church? Huh? Something seriously wrong with that picture. Just say, no, I'm not coming. Amen. Be honest. Tell the truth. All right, we got another reference in James. Let's see what the Holy Spirit has to say there. James. The fifth chapter. Verse 12. Going to shed a little bit more light on that. Let your yes be yes, and your no means no. All right, are we all there? Let us read. But above all things, read. But above all things, things my, brother, my brother, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay. Least thou fall into condemnation. See, God knows when you start, you know, I don't talk about, I promise, <laughs> I swear, you fall into line, which is an abomination in the Lord's eyes. See, God can't stand a liar. Amen. So now you got to grow up. Talking about Christians, you got to grow up from that. Amen. You do not have to explain yourself. Let your conversation be yes or no. That's it. If somebody asks you to do something and you don't want to do it, just say no. Amen. Amen. So simple. Keep you from lying. Don't be saying, I'm going to try. Well, you know, I, you know, yes, nay. I'm going to be the Bible study. I'm not going to be the Bible study. You ain't need to go with no explanation. I'm coming to church. I ain't going to church. That's it. So simple. Amen? Amen? See, now, after divine discipline, people make promises to God. You know, we're quick to make promises to God that we're going to straighten up. After God then punished you and whipped you. So quick to make promises to God with their mouth. But in their heart, their heart is far from it. And we have some references here. Matthew 15, go back to Matthew. Empty repentance. See, when you repent means that you didn't change your mind about the Lord and you ain't serious, it's empty. God don't want you to have empty repentance. That means changing your mind. That means let your yay, yay, nay, nay. Matthew 15 chapter. Too many Christians get caught up into this. And we need to stop it. God wants you to stop it right now. Amen. All right. Fifth verse of chapter 15 of the book of Matthew. We're going to look at verses 5, 6, 7, and 9. Let us read. But ye say we. But ye say, whatsoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift 
And whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye have commanded, and God of none effect by your tradition. In other words, what is he saying here? He's saying that, listen, uh, you're a hypocrite, number one, because you're trying to make an excuse of not wanting to do something. Amen. So you got to say, well, you know, I got to uh, take my mother somewhere, or I got to be with my, uh, take her to the hospital, or what? I got to go take care of her, got to see about her. You know, you didn't tell somebody to lie that you're not going to do it. Amen. <laughs> but you don't want, you trying to get out of uh, not doing something, so you make up an excuse here. All right, verse 7, let us read. Ye hypocrites, read. Ye hypocrites, well did Israel prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do wish of me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, they honor me with their lips but their heart is far from him. See, God wants you to stop honoring him with your lips. Amen. Talking about praise the Lord. But on Monday morning uh, and Friday night and Saturday night, you out with Satan. Something's wrong with that picture. You a child of God talking praise the Lord on Sunday and talking like a sailor, cussing like a sailor on Monday. Something's wrong with that picture. Amen. You honor in God with your lips, but your heart is far from him. We got another reference in Psalm 78, verse 1. Turn to it. We're going to look at verse 1. And then we're going to drop down to 5 and 8. And then we're going to look at 34 and 40 through 42 in the book of Psalms, 78 chapter. You know, Psalms shed a lot of light on the way people are today. All right, verse 1 of the book of Psalms, 78 chapter, let us read. Give ear, read. Give, Give ear, O my, my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Drop down to verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and pointed a law in Israel which commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come may know them, even the children which should be born who shall arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget, but keep his commandments, and might be as their fathers, as stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Now, this is what the problem is today. Amen. We as a nation is failing the next generation. Amen. We're not teaching them what God say. Amen. We're not teaching them what the word of God say. See, it was too many ministers out there protesting with this Ferguson thing. Now, I'm not going to call no names. But instead of protesting, you should have been telling them about God ordained the military, the police officers. They do not carry that pistol for nothing. See, instead of protesting with them, you should have told them, look, Brown would have been alive today had he had respect for authority. Amen. But no, you out there with your hands up, walking and protesting, inciting the folks, and you are a man of God. Listen, you got a problem. God is watching you. Amen. And I'm not going to call your name. You already know who you are. And I pray that you look at me on YouTube. Amen. And go to the word of God. You're a man of God. Amen. And you're out there not telling the people what God say. But now you got caught up in your emotions. Too many ministers are not feeding the sheep his word. And that's where the problem is. All right, drop down uh, to verse 34. And this is where a lot of Christians... When the, everything hit the fan, they want to turn back to the Lord. All right, we're going to look at verses 34 uh, through 42. Let us read. When he slew them, read. 
When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. Stop right there for a moment. See, when God put pressure on you and problems on you, that's when you want to turn to him. No, no. See, God wants us to seek him when things are not hard in our life. Verse 35, let us read. And they remembered, read. And they remembered that God was their rock and their high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. Amen. See, they flattered. See, folks, too many Christians is lying to God, especially when they get up in the middle of a service. You know, the Lord is the head of my life. Amen. Amen. And they living in a sin of fornication. Something's wrong with that picture. The Lord is the head of my life. And you're on the deacon board. And you got several women on the side. Amen. The Lord is the head of my life. See, if Bill Cosby had understood the word of God. Amen. He wouldn't be in this mess right now. Amen. He did not understand. Your own sins will destroy you. Because what's done in the dark will come to the light. Amen. What's done in the dark will come to the light. Now, God is going to show you up after all these years. All right. They lied with their tongue. Verse 37, let us read. For their heart read. For their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many of them turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh and wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand nor the day when he had delivered them from the enemy. See, so many times God delivered us. So many times God has gotten us out of a jam. So many times God has blessed us. But guess what? When you get into a tight, you forget about the Lord. Amen? You forget about the Lord. God say, look, that is an empty change of mind. Empty repentance. And God say, no, no. I'm not going to have it. So now what's hindering you? What's hindering you for giving God what's due? Let's turn to Hebrews 6 chapter. Let's see what the Holy Spirit left here in the book of Hebrews for us. In the 6th chapter. See, a lot of people run well. But things come about in their life that hinders them and they stop walking with God. Amen. And see, that's Satan's objective is to get you away from learning God's word by any means necessary. Amen. Many Christians start out with the Lord. They start out in church and they run well for a while. But things hinders them along the way. And they fall by the wayside. All right, here in Hebrews, the sixth chapter. When a person gets caught out there in left field, so far out there in left field, it becomes hard for that individual to come back. All right, here in verse 4, 5 and 6, let it read, for it is impossible, read, but it's impossible for those who have once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucified in themselves the son of God afresh and put him to open shame and empty search amen some people search for meaning to life <coughs> instead of searching for God who gives meaning amen constantly searching for a meaning in life. I happened to look on the internet the other day and the scientists have discovered, so they say, that the word of God has already told us 
that God has placed it in our DNA, coded in our DNA, his word. That's what scientists have discovered. Now, I don't know how they discovered that. It was written right here in the word of God. <laughs> Amen. God said, I'm going to put it in, he's going to put it in us. Amen. But now it's supposed to be this big mystery that God's word has been encoded in our DNA. Well, if they had read the Bible, they'd learn a long time ago. Ain't nothing new. So how are you going to discover something that he'd already revealed to us? So now people are searching for meaning to life instead of searching for God who gives meaning. They go to church only to become disenchanted and bored. Why is that? It's because expecting life apart from God leads to emptiness. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that on YouTube? Amen. <laughs> Expecting life apart from God leads to emptiness. And we have a reference here in Matthew 6 chapter. Go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. 6 chapter. Verse 22 and 23. Let's look at this. All right. Are we all there? Let us read. The light of the body, read. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is thou darkness. Now let's explain this a minute here. We got a key word here. In verse 23, underline, uh, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. What is he talking about? See, Satan's objective is to stack lies in your soul, in your mind. That's Satan's objective. And this is why he say, now, if Satan has stacked lies in you, how great is the darkness in you. That's what this verse is saying. See, empty repentance opens up the door to satanic deception. See, when you lie to God and say that you're going to come back to him and that you to repent and change your evil ways with your lips, but your heart is from him, you open up the door to satanic deceptions that brings about frustration in your life, brings about discouragement in your life, and brings about boredom. And that's why, I, you know, when Christians, I hear Christians say that, that you know, I don't go to church because church is boring. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, uh, y'all, y'all just, y'all are a dead church. All y'all do is read the Bible. Y'all thump pages too much. It's boring. How is the word of God boring? Hmm? The only reason why it's boring is because you got the problem. God's word is alive and powerful. Amen. It is alive. And it brings joy when you really understand and get with the plan of God. Amen. It brings joy. See, boredom leads to a path in many directions. See, when you're bored, you get caught up in Satan leads you on a path in many directions uh, for his power lust, trying to influence those that you want to impress. Amen. Approbation lust. You are living for success because you think success, success is going to bring you happiness. Folks, that's all they live for, to be a status symbol. Amen. <coughs> they are living for social life. The only thing in some folks' minds is nothing but sex. Sex, sex, sex. And then some folks get caught up into the materialism. See, these are the paths that are there for those that are frustrated 
discouraged, disenchanted, and bored, Satan's open up this door and have you going down. See, your lust supersedes your hunger for Bible teaching. See, you don't want to hear the word of God. You don't want to hear Bible teaching. Amen. You become a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of God. And you know, I got a whole bunch of folks on my job that that's all they live for is the weekend. Amen. They live to go gamble. Amen. Gamble their whole paycheck away. That's all on their mind. Amen. Playing the board, football board, whatever, trying to win something. Amen. That's all they live for because they are caught up in that pleasure. See, that pleasure demon got him. And we have some references here. 2 Timothy 3. Turn to it. Very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter. See, everything you want to know is right here in Scripture. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Folks become a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of God. We're talking Christian folks here. All right, verse 4 and 5, let us read. Traitors, heady read. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. In other words, they're looking like a child of God. They're looking like a Christian, all pious. Amen. But got an empty repentance. In other words, they're empty because they're not living the word. They're not being obedient to the word. They're not worshiping God in spirit and in obedience. That word truth. God's word is truth. That's why he say you must worship me in spirit and truth. That truth is God's word. Obedience to his word. And you're not doing it. We have another reference. Uh, living in pleasure. And see, when you live in pleasure, you're dead. You're spiritually dead. If that's all that's on your heart is pleasure, is you're, li you're spiritually dead. All right. A reference that talks about that in 1 Timothy uh, 5, 5th chapter, verse 6. Amen. See, this given a, an analogy of a widow, amen, in church who had lost a husband, amen. And uh, she got to the point, now she become a cougar, as they call it. Amen. <laughs> amen. She, 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 that, that's her nickname now. She's on a prowl for younger men. Amen. Old men can't do nothing for her. She got to have a young thing. Amen. Somebody that's strong, muscular. Woo, muscles. And she just get excited. Amen. <laughs> Verse 6. Let us read. But she that liveth free, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead. Why does she live? She's spiritually dead because her mind is nothing on pleasure. I didn't say this. Habakkuk. Let's go to Habakkuk, the Old Testament. See, what you can find in the New Testament, you can find in the Old Testament. Let's, let's, let's see what Habakkuk, the Holy Spirit, had to say uh, through Habakkuk. Habakkuk, second chapter, verse 4. Amen. That's one of the minor prophets. You have to go to your table of contents to find it right quick. Go ahead. But it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Amen. But the just shall live by his faith. In other words, he's lifted up, but guess what? His heart is not in it. It's what Abaka is saying. Now, I have given you empty repentance, how folks are, and I've just touched on, now I'm going to give you the solution to overcome it. How can you overcome this empty 
Christian lifestyle. That's not real. Number one, avoid a hindering lifestyle such as immorality, self-righteousness. Avoid these things. Religion. Now notice what I say, religion. Religion is controlled by Satan. Amen. Man's own works seeking after higher power which Satan operates through. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is the mind of Christ. It's a way of life. And this is why a lot of Christians are not walking the walk. They are not living the life. They are calling themselves Christians. They want to believe in emotions. Amen. Believe in Christ and accept Christ. They are baby Christians, but they're not walking the walk. Christianity is obedience to God's word in every aspect, no matter how small it may be or how large it may be. You obey God in everything. Your primary, sole purpose in this life is to obey God. That's walking the walk. So now here, going back to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, where it said in verse 4, but it is impossible. We got some key words to look at. It is impossible. Underline it's impossible. Stresses anyone. And get this. Folks on YouTube, get this. Catch this. Anyone who continuously bounce in and out of fellowship will never know anything about the Christian life as God intended it, it to be. Because you too many, you, you're bouncing in and out of fellowship. God said, look here, get in and stay in. And the more you stay in, the longer you stay in, the easier it becomes to stay in. See, when you walk in the walk and you're obedient to God, you're walking in the light of Christ. Amen. This is what God wants to do. See, God can't operate through you. And see, in the church age we're living in, is designed to produce spiritual maturity believers so that God can operate through you. But if you're bouncing in and out, God can't operate through you because you stay out of fellowship too much. You're bouncing in and out. No, no. God wants you to stop straddling the fence. God cannot stand lukewarm Christians. Lukewarm Christians bounce in and out of fellowship. No, no. God say, uh-uh. You can't have one leg in and one leg out. No, no. That's why he said you must deny yourself totally to follow him. So now, that word is impossible for those who was once lightened. Yes, you didn't heard about the word of God. You've been taught the word of God. But you keep bouncing in and out of fellowship, you will never know. You will never experience that fullness that God has for you in this Christian life. That's why it's impossible for you to experience his fullness. And this is where God wants you to get away from this empty repentance. See, God say, repent and come back to him. Repent. Stop bouncing in and out of fellowship. Repent. He don't want your repentance to be empty. All right. There in verse 5, where it says, and have tasted. Underline, have tasted. Only through consistent <coughs> obedience. I'm going to repeat that. Only through consistent obedience to Bible doctrine and the filling of the Holy Spirit can you have the victory that God has for you. Only, and that's the only way that you're going to be able to retain it. You have tasted the good word of God and the powers in the world to come. But, verse 6 says, if you should fall away, amen, fall by the wayside, and get stuck out there in left field. The further you go out, he didn't say you couldn't get, come back. He said, it'd be hard for you. It'd be hard for you. You will never know what God has for you. And we have our last two references in the book of Proverbs, 29th chapter, verse 18. And then we're going to go to 1 John, 5th chapter. Go to Proverbs first. Amen. Have tasted only through consistent Obedience, that word obedience, and that's why God say obedience is far greater than anything else. Only through consistent obedience to Bible doctrine and the filling of the Holy Spirit, you stay filled with the Holy Spirit more than you out of fellowship. 
can you have victory over this emptiness, this empty repentance? All right, verse 20, chapter 29 of the book of Proverbs. Verse 18. Uh, let us read. Where there is no vision, read. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. See, if you want to be happy this morning, and I've given you the solution, amen, and I pray that you want to be happy in YouTube land, uh, just get with the plan of God. Get with the plan of God, and you will be happy. All right, let's go to 1 John 5th chapter. Notice what God is saying here through John in chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Let us read. For this is the love, read. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not agree. Stop right there. See, God loves you. And as Christians, God has called you according to his purpose, not your purpose. God has called you according to his purpose. Amen. And what is his purpose? That you keep his commandments, that you live by his word. You do a right thing in a right way at the right time and with the right motive. That is what you was put here in this life to do and to allow God to operate through you to be that light so that others could be able to see Christ through you. That's your purpose. Now, if you never knew why you was put here, but Satan has stacked a lie in your mind and said, this is my life and I can live it how I want. Wait a minute. Yes, you have the freedom. God has given you a freedom of choice. Amen. But along with freedom of choice comes responsibility. Now, who are you going to be responsible for? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you ever get in trouble, I ain't never heard nobody pray to Satan. Why are you serving Satan and when you get in trouble, you want to pray to God, huh? Something's wrong with that serious picture. And then when God does not answer you right away, you become discouraged, frustrated, and disenchanted and said it wasn't real in the first place. And you get caught out there in left field and the further and further Satan weaves that lie in your mind and get you trapped in his web. Amen? Amen. All right, here in verse 4 it says, For whosoever, let's read, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, I've given you the solution here in this scripture here, verse 4, the solution to this emptiness. For whosoever is born of God. Now, what is that talking about here? Whosoever stays in fellowship. Amen. See, you cannot sin in fellowship. As long as you're in fellowship, you can't sin. You got to get out of fellowship to sin. In other words, sin that you didn't caught, that mental sin that you didn't grasp and caught on to, that pulls you out of fellowship. Amen. Then the sin takes place. So there's a mental sin and there's an overt sin. Amen. See, sin starts in the mind. But he said, for whosoever stays in fellowship has overcome the world. Amen. That is the victory. The victory is the system that God has given us. And that is the system of obedience, the system of love. He has given it to you. Amen. He has given it to me. And he said, just stay in it. Guess what? If you do that, you're going to be happy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. With our heads bowed, Father, we thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity of your word to be able to study and understand. We pray to Heavenly Father that you would help us uh, to grow and to become that you would have us to be. For we ask it in Christ's name is our prayer. Amen.